Hi, Dr. Gary here. Dr. Gary on the road. We sell dental practices uh, nationwide. I'm a dentist myself. So let's see today's topic. The name of today's topic is going to be what are the first steps and initial meetings when selling to a DSO? Often we're asked this question, and we're going to elaborate how the preliminary process starts. Okay? And we'll get into detail about it. This is Dr. Gary. We sell dental practices on the road. The name of our company is Healthcare Practice Sales, LLC. Our website is dentalpracticeguide.com. Our phone number is 201-663-0935. Call us 363 days a year. We work every day except Christmas and Easter. Be happy to answer your questions. Uh, once again, our phone number 201-663-0935 and the website dentalpracticeguide.com. Just call us. Let's talk. Um, the information you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes only. It's not legal or business advice. Um, <clears throat> we're available to you. We're one of the only brokers in the United States that has uh, CPA accounts on staff. And we can answer your questions. We've been doing this 11 years. That combination of CPA accounts and dental dentists, such as myself, make us different than everybody else. <clears throat> we are here to accommodate you <clears throat> and get your practice and, or sold or help you purchase a practice and get it to the next level. Now, the, um, the topic for today, how does this start? How does the process start when initially selling to a DSO? Well, the way we do it is this. We will provide the DSO. We'll come into your office and we'll get a preliminary information. We'll do a profile sheet, one piece of paper that talks about your gross over the last few years, how many days you're open, how many doctors, how many hygienists, how many assistants, how many are there. We'll get some initial work done in that area. We'll go over the rent, the location, the number of days, whether you're marketing or advertising, whether you're computerized or not. Um, as you know, most of these DSOs are looking for 1 million plus uh, offices, five plus chairs. If there could be two doctors, it'd be great. Hygiene staff, that's typical. Now, we do have one in the South that will start at 700,000. So that's a good possibility. Call me on that if you're down South. In fact, I'm going to Florida on the 18th, 19th, 20th. I have a bunch of offices to go visit. We got a, a few of them down there we just started on. So call me, let's talk about it. Uh, or meet us down there. Now, the uh, so getting back to the process, I will provide the DSO. Remember the DSOs pay my commission. And when you work with me, often, not at least, but often, based on certain criteria, I can get your legal fees reimbursed under certain criteria. So I'll provide the DSO with a profile sheet, one piece of paper that has all the vital statistics about your practice. You'll dictate this to me and I'll write it down. All right, we'll get this over to them, and they'll take a glance at it and give us give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Maybe I'll send the tax return and a profit loss with that. But that's your initial process. They will take a look at that document, that profile that we create, and say whether they want to proceed forward or not. They can tell from that. that the they're also looking at location. Staff make up a number of operatories. That's important. So they're going to be looking at that. Um, excuse me, it's getting sunny out here. I'm putting my glasses on. So they're going to look at that, and they're going to check that out, and they will um, make a determination do they want to proceed forward. Okay? Once that, I'll set up an initial meeting, and I'll be there. I'm always there. I'll be there, and I'll introduce the seller, and I'll bring the DSO in. Now, many sellers say would like a couple DSOs, and we will bring different DSOs because each one has a little different flavor, a different formula. We'll bring a few of them in and, you know, see if we can put something together like that. So we'll do that, and we'll bring them in to meet you. Um, initially, I suggest you're only meeting the, you, the doctor, alone. They want to see the facility. I don't think you should be talking to anybody, your staff at this point. It's too early on. We don't know what's going to happen or how long it's going to take. Or you may decide you don't want to sell and continue to work for a year. That happens also. 
So, um, what we could do is we'll set up that initial meeting. The, the DSO has already looked over your documents. They may request one or two documents, get a better feel for it. They're coming in to meet you as soon as possible. Remember, they're paying my commission. So, they want to feel comfortable with you and you want to feel comfortable with them. Now, they are, of course, salesmen, but they're also sizing you up. Are you going to be okay to work with, you know, or is this going to be a challenge? You've got to sort of sell yourself, talk about the great potential of the office, the things that you're not doing, you're not marketing, you're not advertising, etc. So they're getting a feel-good feeling with you. They're looking at the office space, and it establishes that first meeting. They're going to go back and speak to their team and, you know, give it a heads up, heads down. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, whether we want to proceed. Usually, if they like an office, they're going to go to, they'll, they'll go to finish. Well, and then they'll set up probably a second office, a second meeting, where they can bring in some of their team to see the office again, maybe meet you again. Well, they would want to meet you again. And now they begin to formulate a game plan. Now, mind you, at this point, on the second visit, in their mind, we're going to get this deal done. This deal is happening in their mind. Um, so they're proceeding forward on the second visit. So the second visit to your office might be followed by a third visit. But after the third visit, it's like, you know, you as a buyer, a seller, are expecting a letter of intent, which states you wish to purchase the practice at X dollar amount. So you're going to do that uh, and then request it. Let's get a letter of intent before we go any further. And they'll give you a non-binding letter of intent. But before they do that, they'll require a significant number of documents. We've gone over this before. Tax return, profit and loss monthly for the last 18 months, procedure code analysis by ADA code, procedure by provider. In other words, what is that provider doing each day? W-2s, lease. Those are just some of the uh, questions that have to be answered, you know, some of the data that they need. They will require more, and they'll keep asking for updates, constantly ask for updates. But that's, now it's at the third meeting they're coming in. If you elect to uh, tell your staff, maybe your staff will be at the meeting. If you don't elect to tell your staff, every doctor's different. I have my own opinions about that, especially private sales. Um, but we can talk about that. So... That will be a second or third meeting. At that point, they're like, we're good to go. We've seen the facility. They're gonna say, we're gonna put our letter of intent together uh, and deliver it to you, and then we'll press forward from there. Press, you're gonna have your attorney look over the letter of intent. We go back and forth with negotiations, and eventually we get there. Remember, the DSOs will generally, generally, go to the closing table, whereas you have more fluctuation with the private buyers just the way it is. Up glasses off, I'm back. So uh, we can put it together. We're there for you. It's still too bright. Sorry, guys. We're there for you. We're there to make it happen. Uh, we'll stay on top of everything. We'll bring you some of the best DSOs in the country. And then we can, um, you know, go from there. So stay tuned. We are uh, ready to help you at any time. All right? Excuse me, I was distracted. All these guys racing on the road. I was thinking... Where the frig are they going that's so important that they got to race like crazy? I don't get it. Maybe I'm missing something. All these mufflers they put, they're so loud. What are they doing? Just verifying their engines on them? It's like, I don't get it. Me, I'm casual, kick back, relax. I don't want to hear anything back there. Who wants to listen to a muffler backfiring? But supposedly that's what you, you know, that's great. I guess they, you know, you're pretty excited about that. I get excited about making a deal. That's what's exciting. All right, team, just rambling on here. Uh, let's talk soon, and away we go. I believe we're at 78 videos. I had no idea I made this many. I hope you're learning something from this. I'm having a blast talking to you about it, and I hope it's a learning experience. I wonder what's going to happen to these videos 100 years from now. Will they still be around? <laughs> Bye now.